Oh, you start the interview right here. What? With this? I'm already running. Whatever. All right, you're running. Okay. I'm Andy. I'm here with Nadzeen at uh, October 28th, the Atomic Bitch Wax 2 release party. Congratulations on the second album. I'm here with Keith Ackerman. He plays the, uh, you know, like the, uh, the bongos or something for the band, drums or something. Drums, cool. Um, well, first of all, just first of all, just congratulations from me and everyone else on the new album. Thanks. Just uh, getting two out, two extremely good albums. I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say it's my favorite release of the year, and uh, I'll probably end up that way. Am I right, Don? Sure. Yeah. Got a few months left here. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry I'm about looking it. at the schedule here. I'm thinking this is it. I, I can think I can. Maybe Tool's gonna come out again on us or something. Nah, I can't live without that. But anyway, um, just. Let's talk about the new album. I mean, a couple of us have it already. It's the official release date is this Tuesday, the 31st. Um, just, I noticed a lot of, like, some themes on the song. We talk about clones a lot. Like, what's all that about? Well, uh, the clone theory is just that um, everyone is the same, and people, or very few people, have any real thought process of their own. They seem to just, like, go in flocks to certain trends, like something that's ridiculous, just like Tommy Hilfiger, you know what I mean, just they made a rectangle and they write his name on there, and every, that's pretty weird. Town, every dude in town wants to wear it, and that's that's kind of what we're talking about. That's cool. And uh, I just, I gotta know, and I'm sure a lot of people out there want to know, like, what is Solid about? What's the story behind that? Um, well, it's about um, a journey of Chris and Ed to procure their, uh, Necessities, like is that like guitar picks and uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's cool. I can understand. You can see, like you played a night, you want a guitar pick. You're like, yeah, you dude, how are we call, get, yeah, yeah, we, we got to make the call for the guitar pick because we don't have any. And you we know, got a jam. Yeah, it's just got a jam. You can't play like it's um, uh, it's open open for your own translation. Yeah, that's cool. That's it cool. can it can mean a lot of things. I see. All right, cool. Um, and also this is sort of like an off the wall question, but assuming you don't already, you know. What would need to what would you need to accomplish in your in your career to consider yourself a success? That's assuming you don't know. Maybe you um, well, I think that um, if we could, we had the chance to just do what we were supposed to do, just just play that. But anything that I ever wanted to have from music would come so easily and naturally, and that's why it's frustrating sometimes as this, some you know backseat project to this bigger you know monster band. And, uh, it's it's rough sometimes on it because uh, we had a lot of opportunities we had to not do and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're doing doing our best trying to keep it going. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned backseat because here we are in the backseat of the cool. van, That's right. more or less. So, but uh, so all right, Ed's out, you know, saving the world with Magnet. You know, what are you guys? Uh, what are you and uh, Chris up to in the meantime? I'm not real sure. Both both of us write songs by ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we thought of just writing them together and starting another band. Oh, really? Um, it wouldn't really sound anything like we sound now. It would be pointless to start another band like this one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we we definitely would have a hard time playing without any member of the band. Like, mm -hmm. you could just, like, get another Chris or... So you're not going to get, like, Ronnie so Dio like, to come in and replace Chris or anything? Well, if, if we could get, like, Richie Blackmore or something, or maybe, yeah. you know, I don't even know who else. If Warren Haynes would join. Yeah, he's still around. He's still picking. Yeah. I'm going to interject with a question. What other projects besides Bishwax have you been involved in? In the um, New Jersey Stone Rock scene? Yeah, from like, um, from birth to now. I played in Salas for a while. I recorded um, all these demos that were supposed to be demos, but Tommy put them out on everything after I wasn't in the band anymore. And uh, it was fun. Um, I had a band called Slap Rocket with uh, Steve Green from uh, Nude Girl, or Nude Swirl, um, days, and uh, he's a backstabber, but it's alright. And uh, that was Slap Rocket, but that fell apart, and um, we, Bitchwax existed since 93 amidst all these bands coming and going. And, uh, and that's about it. I have another band where I write the songs, and Jason from Silas is the singer. That's the clone Obey. <laughs> that's the name of that band. And that's just like depressing and you know, just something I can do. It's like your sorrowful side. Sorrow. It's just, it's, yeah, will you listen to too much Cure or something? Yeah, you know, I understand. But, it's cool. Um, all right, so, so like in a way, Bitchwax for all of you has been the main band through all you know through all the comings and goings. It's sort of. I mean, wasn't 
more or less Ed and Bitchwax before uh, Magnet, or is that how? Well, well, we 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 played together when we started playing together. Mm -hmm. He had just joined. Like I knew him before he was in the band, but we started jamming together right about when he got in. Mm -hmm. It was about the same time, actually. Um, we write all of our songs together, and you know, so it's like an even split with us versus the way the other band is. And, uh, That's cool. And we get to just make up whatever songs we can think of, and we just record whatever we want. So, so the the songs on the new album were those. I mean, I, I personally say I've heard nine out of the ten songs live before. Were those older songs you guys had, or did it sort of come about over the past couple of months um, or so? It's a, it's a mixture. Mm -hmm. um, when we made the first record, we had um, a lot of songs, like 20 songs to pick from, and we just wanted to make the well, <laughs> most well-rounded record we could at the first one. So we didn't use a couple songs that we could have used that we did use this time, but then we wrote a couple songs like a week before we recorded, so it's, I guess it's just a mixture. Cool. And uh, I was talking to Chris earlier, you mentioned uh, an EP coming out of Meteor City next uh, February, I think? Or yeah, March? Or, or March or something, March, yeah. yeah so we'll try to keep putting stuff out, yeah, even though he's running around doing other stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, he mentioned that uh, finally an official version of Black Trains Am will be uh, unleashed upon the, uh, the public. Um, that remains to be seen. Oh, really? He's, uh, he seems to think otherwise, but no. Who was that, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's his, that's his big tune. Yeah, he that's cool. To keep it pushing it, yeah. Well, you know, people are like they like to hear it, so... <laughs> um, so what's the future for Bitchwax? I mean, you know, a year from now, where do you see what's well, going on? I don't know how tied up Ed is going to be, but I know that, uh, given the opportunity, we could do a lot. If we are given that opportunity, a lot of stuff can go on for us. If we're not given that opportunity, obviously, you know, it'll dwindle away and no one will care about us anymore. But I would like to see us, you know, I think we got like five good records in us, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, I don't think we really touched on our whole our whole thing. We go in so many directions. We could maybe get guest singers or get a singer or get organ players or, you know what I mean? We could, we could go so many ways and write so many different styles of songs. I don't even know. You know, maybe we could accidentally have some commercial appeal. I, I doubt it. So if the uh, the president of uh, Atlantic Records is there with a million dollar contract, that's you're going for that? Well, I mean, if it means that we can record whatever we want, still, I mean, was, sure, I, mean, I wouldn't sign with Atlantic. Yeah. Godspeed. That's <laughs> it. They got flushed down the old Atlantic toilet. Godspeed. So, but I mean, I'm sure they're nice, and like, all different people work there. The landing, I'm sure it's a diamond plated toilet, so it's not that bad. But um, I guess just what what am I trying to say here? Like, if, is there any bitch wax without you three guys? I mean, if, if you know, Chris tomorrow says, guys, I want to you know do my own thing. You know, if you want to bring in some other dude and still call it bitch wax, that's cool with me. Is that does that seem possible to you, or is it just like history? Um, well, I don't I don't know anyone that could really do it. To be honest. There's a few guitar players around that, of course, you think of every possibility when mm -hmm. he says, I can't go play, and you're putting the record out. Of course, you know, you think of everything. I don't, I just don't, I don't want to, like, tour with someone else and ruin the credibility of our band mm -hmm. so we can play now versus being able to play later without ruining the credibility. So you don't see yourself doing, like, a, you know, one out of five original members of Sticks kind of tour? No, we don't want to do that. That's cool. That's cool. Um, well, what's, what's your philosophy? Yeah, Don, what's the philosophy? Between the first album and the second album, there seems like a lot of changes. Um, well, the first album was recorded a lot cleaner and um, maybe a lot more clear-headedly. The <laughs> second record was recorded in nine days of New York City. So, that's probably the difference. I think recording in the city made the songs a little more some of them a little faster, or maybe uh, just like a more intense rendition of it or something, just the churn of the evil city. Do you think that just the different studio itself had an impact on the sound? Well, we recorded on a really old um, console, which is in the Studer 24 track, uh, which really is the old style of recorder, which is what you know, the music that we make and the influence while it was probably recorded on the same style stuff. So 
Oh, the drums were dirtier this time than the first record, but I learned to listen to it as a whole and not just deep drum or drums. So how do you guys record? Is it, you know, you just all play it together? You do the drums first? We first? all play together. You know, when you, when you record in a big studio, everything's isolation, and they can just, if I do my tracks good, they can fix anything afterward. Yeah. It's a big, you know, it's easy. Did you guys have any leftover songs from the recording sessions? Or? Not this time. Not this time. We have some more tunes that we didn't record. Yeah. Uh, we didn't record any songs that we didn't record. Cool. Um, all right. Say tomorrow the phone rings and it's you know, hello, Keith. You, know, you can go on tour with any two bands you like. Which two? Right then. Like as bitchwax? Yeah, like as bitchwax. Well, as bitchwax, you're on the you're on the tour somewhere. Yeah. Um, I would like to tour with Metallica. Really? Yeah. Or how about um, I don't know, a nice clutch tour. That would be. Clutch is good. Clutch is on tour. It's coming soon, actually. About uh, um, Fu Man 2 would be a nice build. Would be a nice build. Yeah, I could see that one. Yeah. Maybe get higher on fire on the build somehow. Yeah. I'm sure, you can tack him in on the end there. <laughs> but yeah, um, it would be nice to get to one with like, Gordon Mule. I don't mm -hmm. know what the future of them would yeah. be. Sadly, unfortunately. Great. Um. Well, unless Don has anything, I'm sure. Keith has many. Uh, other what was it like going on tour with Nebula and Core? Yeah, what was that like? Uh, it was good. You know, Eddie and Ruben and old Mark, they were all cool. And I've been friends with the guys at Core for years now. And, uh, it was, it was all right. Um, for a first tour we ever did, it was uh, pretty cool. Well, as your first tour, what were your impressions of actually touring? Um, well, I toured as a road slap with Godspeed when they were on the road, so I had a good idea what was going to happen. It was a lot better to be playing. Uh, no, it was cool to go everywhere. You know, see the cactuses, and yeah. you wake up and the sun's coming up, and you stare out the window and smoke pot. It was, well, it was pretty cool. Was it the kind of thing when you came home you pretty much wanted to go right back out? Yeah, I don't, wouldn't have too much problem with it. It didn't wear on you? Although somebody I mean, else did it this week too. I guess it no, I mean it was it was pretty much natural. I'm used to hanging out with Chris. What did you do last Sunday? It was it was a I don't know, it felt regular. How does it feel that you have you know fans from all over the place? I know Naomi runs your your official webpage and she's in Japan. Now how I mean do you think did you when you were making this this music, do you think this is something that hey people all over the globe are gonna like or is this for my friends? No, we really uh, we really sounded the same since we started. No one was saying stone or rock or making websites or doing any of that stuff. We just happened to keep on doing it. We never really, we never really tried to sell ourselves to record companies or have mailing lists or some big uh, promotional thing. But we just kept playing and we, we started out a lot of people to come see us and people stopped coming to see us for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden people started coming to see us again. And so is there a kind of expected to come to Rex 3 sometime next year or so, or is that a like, part of it? Sure, I'd like to do that. We got it in us. We have the opportunity, like I said. We can record a lot of records. And your first two were on TP, and uh, you know, how'd you get in touch with them, and why are you um, staying in? We played in the Captain Continental. Tony came up to me and said, I want to get a record out. I did. That's cool. And you liked it, so you put the second one out with them? Or? Yeah. Okay, now I know uh, the first one that came out was like an MIA slash TP, was that? Yeah, that's what, whatever. Yeah, it's the record's out. That's what yeah. And uh, again, a, a very excellent album cover the second time around, <laughs> following the trend nicely. Ori is a, is a wild man, he does all the... Uh, I actually ran into him.